Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the Furman T07571 Tri-Fuel Generator. This thing will run on gasoline, natural gas, or propane. It usually sells for $6.99 or $7.99, depending on when you can catch it on sale. Out of the box, you just have to assemble some basic things like wheels, the support underneath the handle, and the handle itself, if I remember right. I also seem to remember that it came with its own tools, but I always prefer just to use my own tools. Now stick around till the end of the video and I'll share some conclusions about the generator, as well as some problems that developed with it that I absolutely could not believe. Now moving on to engine specs, they do call for 37.2 ounces of oil, even though it only comes with one quart. Now this will put the oil level in the safe zone on the dipstick, but you might want to think about adding 5 ounces of oil to it in case of usage down the road. If you're finding any value in this video, please click that like button below and subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Okay, so back to the video. Now the generator does come with this nice cover like you would find on a barbecue grill. It's pretty water resistant on the outside, but inside it's pretty soft. It's a tight fit, so be ready for that. It also includes a nice hose and a regulator for the LP, but for the natural gas, you're going to have to buy that one separately. And last but not least, it does come with a nice cord adapter with these four outlets and a 30 amp twist lock connector that goes right here. And these outlets also have a 20 amp breaker. So let me give you a quick tour. All right, so going from the top down, here we have an eight gallon gas tank. Now, unfortunately, it's metal and it's going to be prone to rust if you do keep fuel in it for a long time. Underneath this gas cap, we have a filter here that you can remove and clean and also get a good look at the inside of the tank. There's also a fuel gauge on here, so that's very helpful too. Now, there's also a very nice 10-page instruction book tied to the frame that has some startup and shutdown procedures in there. And there are also some more instructions printed onto the tank itself. And these don't have any text, just pictures. Now here's a strap for some cables and a bracket to hold the plug adapter. The handle on the side is also very nice and sturdy and it hangs down with gravity when not in use. Now one of the common complaints that I saw in the reviews was the generator was just too heavy at 230 pounds. But using the handle it rolls around just fine and I don't see any problem with the weight. Now we're back over here on the handle side and we do have the spark arrestor. This is removable and cleanable should it ever get clogged up. And over here on this side of the gas tank, we have a sticker with the model number and some pertinent information right there too. All right, so over here we have our air filter. Now this is a nice air filter because it's foam and the foam air filter you can just take out and wash and then let it dry in the sun. And then of course we have our choke and run lever up here and our pull cord option. Now this is just an option. I prefer to use the electric start because it's easier, but we're gonna test that pull cord to see how hard it's gonna be to start on a cold engine. And then of course, here's our natural gas and LP selector switch right here. All right, so here's the back of the unit. Not a whole lot going on right here, but you do have access to the carburetor and the carburetor bowl drain screw. So you can drain out the bowl for long-term storage. And you also do have the spark plug right here and that's easy access as well. Okay, so here we are on the front where all of the action is. We're gonna go from left to right. Right here is where your LP and NG threads onto, and that's also where your propane regulator hose that comes with the unit is gonna thread on right there. Next, we have our fuel selector switch. To the left, we have our propane and natural gas, and then you would use the switch on the side that I showed you earlier to select between propane and natural gas. Put the switch back on off for long-term storage. That's where you would leave that most of the time. And then of course, over here to the right is your regular gasoline. Now up here, we have our status light. Now the different colors and signals that this thing puts out is gonna be on page eight of that little quick manual that's wire tied to the side of the tank. Next, we have our starter switch. Right there is how you do the electric start. And of course, we have a nice digital display here that doesn't come on unless the unit is running, but it shows volts, frequency, and hours. All right, so we have four receptacles on the front, and they work just like this. This is our main double pole breaker, and this breaker has to be on for any of these four to work, and this is actually a 31 amp breaker. 
Next, we have our 50 amp stove plug right here. So this should be pretty easy to find the plug for this. Even though this is a 50 amp plug, it's actually fused at 31 amps because this is our breaker. All right, so right here we have what looks like an ordinary on off switch, but this is actually a 30 amp breaker. Now this has to be on for these other three plugs to work, and this one has to be on as well. Right down here we have our 122 40 volt twist lock plug, and this actually fits that twist lock adapter that I showed you earlier that had the four plugs on there. Right next to that, we have a regular 120 volt twist lock plug right there. And then right next to that, we have our standard household plug that's protected GFI. And it's also protected from this 20 amp circuit breaker right here. Now the total amperage for all four of these receptacles is 31.25 amps. And that comes out to the 7,500 watts, which is what the generator is actually rated for. Now down here is the battery. Now this is actually the original battery that this came with three years ago. And it's still working, so I left it in there. And it's nice that they give you this negative line disconnect right here for long-term storage. And right here is your ground connection, so you'll want to check your local codes to see if that's required for you. And that's about it for the grand tour. So I'm not going to connect this thing to my house since I don't have the proper transfer set up, but I am going to run a table saw that's pretty power hungry and a TV as well while the saw is running. Okay, so to start this thing on propane, go ahead and open up the gas, make sure your battery is connected up, and turn the side to LP and the front to LP. Turn off all your breakers, make sure all your breakers are turned off, put your choke on start, and go ahead and I'm going to use the pull starter. I wind up pulling this thing about four times on a cold engine, so it wasn't too bad. It had been sitting for a while. All right, so we're at 246 volts at 62 hertz. Now I have a dB meter on my phone, so we're about one foot away from the unit, so we might as well call that 90. And then I backed away about a good 10 or 12 feet, so we can call that about 80 right there. It's a little bit on the loud side. Yeah, it does help when you uh, try to power stuff up. If your breakers are off, remember those two have to be turned on. All right, got the saw running good. Now we're gonna go up and power up the TV right here just to show you that it will power electronics. And I'm gonna throw in a second saw there just for good measure. Okay, so to power off, make sure all your equipment is turned off, cut off all your breakers, cut off the fuel, and then the engine will quit right away and then select your selector to off, and then make sure the battery is disconnected. Okay, so let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Literally, the ugly. So first thing I wanna say is, is that I do like this generator. It runs and performs good. I don't have a lot of time on this engine, so I can't speak of the longevity of it, but it does have plenty of plug options, and I do like that. Now, some of the online reviews at Costco were favorable, and some not so favorable. For example, main, many complained about the generator being too loud. Now, I thought it was on the loud side, but for the size unit that it is, I didn't think it was any louder than it should be. And many complained about shipping damage right out of the box. Mine didn't have any of that. And some also, some also complained that they couldn't get it started brand new out of the box or that it quit shortly after they got it. Now, some explanation for this could be some of the sensors in there went bad. I have heard that before, so that could be the culprit for that. Now, I did want to talk about one other thing that I would consider bad, is this unit has a fairly high total harmonic distortion. If you look at the ratings of it, it's between 11 and 14% at full load. Now, what's considered clean power is below 6%. So you might want to look up what that means and how that can affect your electronics. Even though I did plug in a TV to this thing without any problem, I don't really like the fact that that THD is kind of on the high side. So you can do with that what you want. And here's the part that I would consider ugly. I wanted to point out some areas that when I recently discovered them, I couldn't believe my eyes. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the presence of mind to take pictures of it before I cleaned everything up. I was just so mad, I started tearing stuff apart and cleaning it up to try to fix everything that I saw. Now, bear in mind that this unit has been inside of an enclosed trailer with not a drop of water getting in there, and the engine has maybe an hour of runtime, okay? There's also some other power equipment in that same trailer that's not showing any signs that I'm gonna show you here. 
So it's just this unit. Now I do have some pictures here from some areas that just wouldn't clean up even after I tried to clean them up. Notice in this picture, the rusty bolts here, and there's also some pitting in the metal on the generator part. Now notice the rust in the frame area. I mean, what is this all about? The frame is rusting out from beneath this thing for no reason whatsoever. It's never been wet, like I said. Here's a rusty fuel clamp in this one, just for no reason at all. There's some more places like this that I can show, but I think you get the idea. I'll let you draw your own conclusions on how well this thing is made or how well the metals are that it's made with, whatever you want to say. Now, it is a lower-priced unit compared to a Honda, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, that's about all I have for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.